So I'm starting a new series on CD3, and this is the first, uh, and it's what 3D artists need to know about CG Maths. So what do you need to know? Well, firstly you need to know about light rays. Light rays are emitted by lights in our scene, and thrown around the scene until they hit surfaces. And when they hit a surface, they bounce to create two important components. Scattered light, which we call diffuse, and reflected light, which we call specular. And the final result, what we see, is just a matter of addition. Diffuse plus specular equals the final result. And when I mean it's a simple matter of addition, I mean literally it's just addition. It's just like 0.6 plus 0.3 equals 0.9. But this happens at uh, a pixel level, so every single pixel on the screen is, is added together. All the components of light to make up that pixel are added together per channel, like R, G, and B. So it's a little bit more complicated, but we just have still some simple addition and multiplication. So here we have base color, our texture, times the fuse light, plus specular color times specular light. Specular color is just the specular texture. And that equals the final result. And again, we just have some simple math. So if we just look at the red part of this RGB value here, we have 0 0.8 times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 equals 0 0.64 because 0 0.8 times 0 0.5 equals 0 0.4, 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 equals 0 0.24. And you can just see that's a very simple bit of addition at the bottom. 0 0.4 plus 0 0.24 equals 0 0.64. We don't need to get too caught up in doing the maths ourselves because we have computers to do it for us, but we do need to understand that it's just mass, very simple addition and multiplication driving the whole thing. And that will help greatly if you move on to more advanced subjects like how to do lighting compositing and all this kind of stuff. So why do we care? Well, I mean, apart from it's the fundamentals of lighting compositing, should you do that? We care because there's some consequences to this mass, to this simplification of what actually happens in real life. And that is that anything times zero is also equal to zero. And there's some consequences to this. So the way things overexpose in CG isn't quite like real life. So on the left we have like proper exposure. Here, as we pump up the light hitting our object, you can see that it's going more and more white. But on the right we have some bad exposure. Here, no matter how much light we throw at the scene, no matter how much light we throw at that surface, it will never go white. It will never clamp, it will never overexpose in the correct way. It will always go to this pure red value, and that's because of the mass underlying how it works. So left is good, right is bad. And what this means for us is when we design our textures, we should never use zero. So in real life, things overexpose to white, they appear white, but we because we fake uh, our light using RGB values, and since everything multiplied by zero is also zero. If any of those RGB components are zero, the overexposed surface will never appear white. So pure black, it's definitely out. Never have pure black on your texture. Zero, zero, zero is bad. No amount of light hitting that surface will light it in any way. And, but also the solo red value or solo green value or solo blue value, those will look overexposed to pure red, pure green and pure blue. Combination is also going to break, so red and green, blue and green, any, if any of those have a zero value, you won't get the correct exposure. So if we just go back a bit, um, you can see that because we have these very small um, art green and blue values in our image, like 0 0.05, that's just enough to help um, that red surface overexpose correctly, and you can see that it's going pink. And, and then yellows and eventually hit white if I pump more light at it. But that red surface, the pure red surface with zero in, our, in green and blue will never overexpose correctly and will always look wrong. And the same is true of light. If you have a pure red light, then no, any surface that it's bouncing off will always clamp to red. Uh, same as skewers, any specular texture or any of that. So when we're dealing with these color values, we need to make sure that every single value has some sort of even very small number in it. So it is just maths, and some, there's another simple bit of maths which is worth bearing in mind, and that is uh, called energy conservation. 
and simply put energy in equals energy out plus heat. And, and these are real values, like the real energy, light has a real energy value, the energy out of it has a real energy value, and heat has a real energy value. So, you know, you shine a light on, the sun shines on an object, it gets hotter. Um, it reflects light, which we see, and it warms up. So that heat temperature, the heating up the object, is an energy loss. And we just have a value in watts. What's in equals what's out plus a bit of heat. Now, fortunately for us, um, PBR and metal roughness will take care of this for us. We don't need to worry. But we do need to worry with the old system, uh, with the gloss spec system, um, because that was very easy to create and create results. So if you're still using spec lock for a system, then you need to... Um, pay a bit more attention to how you set up your textures than you do well I mean than you do with metal roughness in which you have to pay no attention at all so uh, there's a couple of useful references for you which I'm going to put in the description uh, one is the SIGGRAS physically based shading theory it's pretty hardcore uh, there's also algorithmics PBR guide which you absolutely must read and try and understand if you're a CG artist so I hope you like the new format. Um, I might do some more of these theory style software agnostic uh, tutorials. Uh, probably do some art theory as well as some shading theory. And uh, hopefully that will help you um, strengthen your skills as CG artists. If you like it, then you know I really respond to comments in the videos. Um, please like and subscribe. Uh, that's, that will encourage me to do more of this.